In the summer of 1982, Michael Hardwick and his male partner were arrested by the police in Georgia for having consensual gay sex in his own home and violating Georgia's anti-sodomy law. Under Georgian law, sodomy, which is a term used to refer to a variety of sexual activities traditionally deemed immoral, was a felony that carried a sentence of up to 20 years of imprisonment. The cause of this bizarre arrest was that a police officer named Keith Torek discovered the sexual act by entering Hardwick's home and opening his bedroom door without consent or a valid warrant. Torek allegedly thought he had a valid warrant for arresting Hardwick due to a missed court date, but it later turned out that Hardwick had already settled the issue by paying a fine at a court office, so there was no warrant to begin with. Despite having no valid reason for entering Hardwick's home, Torek arrested Hardwick and his partner for sodomy and cited Hardwick's so-called attitude problem as part of his reasoning. The district attorney decided to not pursue the case because he didn't believe in prosecuting consensual sex, but Hardwick decided to use this opportunity to legally challenge Georgia's sodomy law. When American laws were first established in the colonial era, anti-sodomy laws did not narrowly focus on homosexuality. Rather, they were a broad category that included a wide range of sexual behaviors like pedophilia, rape, bestiality, and anal sex, regardless of the participants' genders. The colonial sodomy laws were virtually never used to prosecute homosexual people, because the modern understanding of homosexuality and its categorical stigmatization did not develop until the late 19th century. The mid-20th century saw a drastic increase of sodomy laws being used to target homosexual communities, with the vast majority of arrests under sodomy laws in this era being related to homosexuality. Starting from 1962, some states began to remove or reduce criminal penalties for sodomy, and by the 1970s most states had relaxed their sodomy laws. By the 1980s, consensual private homosexual sex was increasingly recognized as protected by the Constitution which was why Hardwick thought he stood a chance against Georgia's outdated sodomy laws. When Hardwick's case attracted public attention, civil rights groups wanted to use it to trigger nationwide repeals of anti-sodomy laws, and Hardwick agreed to cooperate with the American Civil Liberties Union. His case went through the lower level courts with conflicting results and eventually reached the Supreme Court, which would make a final decision. The Supreme Court shocked the nation by determining that Georgia's criminalization of consensual private homosexual sex was constitutional. The majority opinion by Justice Byron White stated that the Constitution did not grant individuals the right to engage in homosexual sodomy. He further argued that repealing anti-sodomy laws would make it difficult to prosecute other types of sex crimes like incest and adultery. Chief Justice Warren E. Berger condemned homosexuality as immoral, and even tried to persuade Justice White to explicitly voice opposition to homosexuality, but Justice White refused and chose to only focus on legal issues. In his opinion, Justice Berger explicitly named homosexuality itself as the problem and characterized it as a crime against nature that was worse than rape. He asserted that using the Constitution to protect such abhorrent behaviors was against many centuries of moral teaching and referred to historical eras when homosexuals were executed in an approving way. The dissenting opinion by Justice Harry Blackman criticized the decision for ignoring the fundamental right to privacy and imposing religious morality on the entire nation. He also suggested that only the willfully blind would deny human beings fundamental need for sexual intimacy. Justice John Paul Stevens' dissenting opinion pointed out that previous court cases had already established that consensual heterosexual sex could not be prosecuted under anti-sodomy laws, so Georgia should shoulder the burden of proving why homosexual people should be treated differently. After losing the case, Hardwick passed away from AIDS in 1991 and remained bitter about the Supreme Court's decision until the end of his life. Although the decision didn't lead to mass arrests of homosexual people, it opened more possibilities for discrimination by cementing the legal notion that being homosexual was potentially criminal. For example, Georgia's attorney general withdrew a job offer to a lesbian because being a lesbian was technically breaking Georgian laws even if she wasn't arrested or prosecuted. Though being arrested for having homosexual sex in one's private home remained rare, homosexual people faced countless obstacles in life because the Supreme Court had decided that they were all potentially criminals. 
It wasn't until as recently as 2003 that the Supreme Court changed its mind on this issue in the seminal case of Lawrence v. Texas. This court case was again triggered by the bizarre arrest of a man having gay sex with his partner in his own home, this time in Texas. The police barged into the man's apartment because they received a call claiming that there was a man with a weapon in the apartment and arrested the two men upon witnessing the gay sex. The case eventually reached the Supreme Court, which resulted in the striking down of all anti-sodomy laws across the nation, finally putting an end to the government's ability to interfere with private sex between consenting adults.